Hello friends, Tal here, and welcome to How to Tank Mythic Elorenth Renfero in the Emerald Nightmare Raid. This is the spider boss slash bird boss, and it is the commonly the second encounter here in the fight, in the mythic version of the raid. Now, this is a fight that's very easily um, two to three tankable, two if you can manage the mechanics and you're not going to be any sort of mess ups, or three if you want to make it a little bit easier on the healers, easier on the, the raid as a whole, uh, and if maybe you want to have that extra security for the many parts of the fight. Now, as far as overview of the fight and everything that's changed, not much, honestly. Most of the fight is exactly the same. There's just two big differences, um, during one during the spider boss phase and one during the bird boss phase that kind of changed the fight for you a little bit. Uh, so first off, during the spider form, you're still going to have the web of pain going out, you're still going to have different raid members having the venom that explodes and drops green stuff everywhere, and you're still going to have feeding time that spawns spiders. But the important thing here is, not only do, do the spider venom actually really, really hurt now, so you have to be careful if you're going to be too tanking this because you're spreading out the web of pain and it's just going to be doing increased damage to both tanks, but on top of that, the spiders, if they're within a certain range of the boss, will in devastatingly increase the boss's damage. And you start getting into one-shot territory for your tanks. Um, so you definitely need to make sure that they're far away. Maybe further away than you held them when you were in Heroic. And normally you should have been holding them pretty far away anyways. Just so you don't want to drop green in the middle of the raid. Um, but now you have to make sure that it's far enough away that you're not going to be gimping your tanks. Um, and that's why three tanks are usually better for this. The other thing that's important to know is Web of Pain, any Web of Pain, because other people can get Web of Pain in the fight. Um, if you, like, cross the Web of Pain over someone, it does damage them and it knocks them around. You can easily knock someone off the platform or knock someone, you can get yourself knocked off the platform by other people not managing their Web of Pain correctly. So it's very important that you stay next to your Web of Pain target, your co-tank, and you do not knock people off the platform, you do not get them killed, you do not waste anyone's time or make them take damage. So beyond that, when feeding time comes down and she explodes in a little green circle, there's this web graphic that expands around the room. It's like a texture on the floor. Now this texture is going to do damage. You won't die because you're a tank, let's be for real. But you don't want to stand in it because it's still going to be doing damage to you that you can easily avoid and not have to burden your healers with. The other thing to note is when she goes into her transition and she starts doing the knockback as soon as the feathers comes down you need to have one tank run over to the other side be tanking that boss and you need to have your two or other tank ready to grab the spiders together that spawn from the web bridge and kill them very quickly the big change here is that there is a new mechanic called violent winds what this does is that it chooses its main target and it pushes them back very very far and does an increased stacking dot on them that increases like the magical damage they're taking from the violet winds. The intention of this mechanic is that you have the rage stack and everyone soaks it so or you have some people stack and they soak it so that the, the tank doesn't die. But it's usually way more efficient and usually just way better to have the tank solo soak it. Now make no mistake, this is a heavy, heavy damaging moment of the fight. It's the most deadly moment of the entire fight. You're gonna be taking a bunch of stacks of this debuff and it's gonna get close to one shot territory. So you need to have very powerful cooldowns up. You need to have maybe some external cooldowns or magic damage reduction cooldowns. What I found in my testing was that as a bear druid, because you do not generate rage from damage taken unless you take bristling fur, and because you don't have anything besides mark reversal, which is just a 30% damage reduction on magic damage, it was difficult to say that I would be a good tank to soak this and you need two at least because it happens two times per rock phase so the very first one we had my um, warrior co-tank take it with some externals his shield wall he could he could keep popping ignore pain because he was taking so much damage his rage bar was getting filled up but when it came my turn I was struggling yes I could pop all my cooldowns and just hope and pray that they could heal me through it but what we ended up doing is because we were three tanking the boss and it was just very a lot easier to manage everything all the components of the fight we had our prop paladin who was a third tank just blessing of spell warding me and that completely eased it for us and made everything very easy blessing of spell warding is a freaking gift from the gods on that fight uh, and you very easily cheese the violet winds mechanic but of course there's many different ways to do this essentially you just need to make sure that you have enough cooldowns to cover two tanks tanking the violent winds because it happens twice before she transitions back into her spider form there's still going to be raking talents and it actually happens right after violent winds 
we noticed that at times she would teleport the tank to herself when she was doing the raking talons or and this is the more unfortunate part she would choose a random person in melee and raking talons them even though she still had aggro on the on the other tank that was taking the wins so honestly you need to be a little careful what i would suggest is that Whoever, whatever tank is taking the violent wins, as soon as it's over, have one of the other two tanks taunt the boss and have them do the raking talent swap. That way the other tank doesn't have to worry about getting teleported or getting one of your melee uh, killed, basically, on that fight. Beyond that, she's still going to do her razor wing, stay away from it, and then she'll transition to spider form, which again, she's going to do feeding time. She does not really drop, either she doesn't drop a web texture on the floor this time, or it's not as big, uh, because it goes away very quickly, I didn't even notice it. You still want to gather the spiders off far enough away from the boss that it's not going to be buffing them. You still want to go ahead and manage your web of pain intelligently and not knock anybody off, especially if you see in this video, we are close to the edge, so it's imperative that we're very careful with our positioning. And she's still going to do that twice before she transitions into the final platform, which again is nothing special. She's in rock form. She's doing rock abilities, but not violent wins. There's little eggs all over the place. You don't even have to worry about them. You just kill the boss, finish it off. If you don't kill her by then, then I, I guess that's like a soft in range and you wipe. But overall, it's a very mechanically important fight. It's not just you, but everyone in the raid has very important self-responsibility things. You have to manage the tornadoes and the, the necrotic venom thing. You cannot put them next to each other because the tornadoes will suck up the venom and throw them at the raid. Um, it's not a hard fight by any means, but it's very easy to fuck it up. And it's very easy to do, make a mistake, especially tanking the spiders near the boss that can just kill everybody in the raid. And it, it's just, you know, personal responsibility. You have to be intelligent and smart with what you're doing. Overall, I enjoyed this fight. Um, soaking the Violet Winds as a bear was kind of rough, but we, you know, we were three tanking anyway, so we just spell warding, done, done deal. Not, not too much to worry about. I would not recommend that if you're two tanking, you have a Guardian Druid for that. While you can manage it, I mean, if you do survival instance, 50% damage reduction, you have Mark Reversal, you took Bristling Fur to get some rage. It's manageable. It's just, I don't see the point in why you would go through all that much effort when something like Blessing of Spell Warding or Divine Shield or, you know, things like that exist i don't know why you'd have to work too hard to make it work but either way two or three tank it's up to you it depends on the raid and the mechanics and how easily you guys are able to handle everything i honestly still think three tanks is better just for you know that consistency but overall it's a fun fight i enjoyed it and it was a decently easy one Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and drop it a like. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content just like this. And I want to thank the time each and every single one of you took out of your day to go ahead and watch this. As well as a very special thank you to my Patreon patrons who continue to make this uh, dream a reality through their monthly continued support. If you'd like to go ahead and become a Patreon patron, you can go ahead and click right there on the logo, it'll take you right to the page. And other than that, you can go ahead and tweet me or follow me at Tauriel here on Twitter. Twitter, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastic day. See you guys around. When the colors fade and it turns to gray, we'll calmly walk away, walk away from the fray. When structure falls and all else fails, we will build it once again.